Good morning. Good morning and welcome to this Baltic breakfast webinar. We will be talking about the behind the Baltic cod crisis, the ecological envelope. My name is Charles Barakov. I'm a policy analyst at the Baltic Sea Center. Uh, the Baltic Sea Center is uh, part of Stockholm University. We have infrastructure for research, we do research, we communicate research. And part of uh, the communication is this series of Baltic breakfast seminars and as this time also a webinar. Generally once a month uh, where scientists present new interesting research. This time we'll be talking in English about the Eastern Baltic Cod. Uh, and um, with us we have um, two scientists present, uh, Henrik Sveding uh, from Stockholm University here in the studio and Anna Vilnes from uh, Tvärmine Zoological Research Station at Helsinki University speaking to us from Finland. Uh, three years ago the cod was in such bad shape, the Eastern Baltic cod, that the European Commission did an emergency break on cod fishing and stopped the cod fishing. Since then only bycatch has been allowed but still the cod hasn't recovered. There's a lot of theories about that uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. The development of the cod over time, some of the theories about what's behind the development and looking at how well do they hold up. And uh, first out will be Henrik Sveding talking about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, um, yes, I will talk about uh, the <coughs> ecological envelope, uh, um, um, the conditions, what we can say about the ecological conditions, uh, uh, which are limiting productivity, reproduction, growth, and, and feeding, and so on. Um, and we have published a, um, it, it doesn't react. Um, I'm sorry. I can't. All right. Nothing happens. Ah, no. All right. Uh, we um, <coughs> published uh, a paper together uh, from uh, Stockholm University Baltic Sea Center and uh, Tvärmine Zoological Station in um, Finland, uh, part of the uh, University of Helsinki, and uh, we try to analyze uh, different e ecological factors that could be important for the cod stock. Um, we start at um, uh, the, the, the history of the Eastern Baltic cod, that is quite dramatic. Um, it has been uh, one of the major cod stocks in, in Europe and, and a very um, good fishery, uh, especially in the 1980s. It's well known. Um, uh, Cod um, outburst, so to speak, in, in, in the mid 1980s. Uh, and if you look at the, um, this um, f figure from um, ISIS um, on, on the left, the upper left uh, panel, um, you can see the uh, cod catches. Uh, and um, they were booming in, in the 1980s and have declined thereafter. Also, fishing mortality has been hi uh, high uh, most of the time um, uh, from, from the 1950s and, and forward, uh, but also has declined in, in recent years. So, um, um, sorry. Um, at the moment, uh, the stock is depleted, but also the individual cod has uh, gone smaller. 
Uh, and um, two major causes of the changes in, in cod productivity is therefore uh, decline in reproduction uh, back in time and uh, uh, also decline in individual growth and survival over the last three decades. And um, it's important to know that uh, the bolt cod is quite unique uh, biologically, um, especially adaption for its um, reproduction in a brackish environment. And um, the eggs are floating and they need uh, uh, salt. It must be at least uh, 11 PSU, uh, 11 promil, uh, more or less. Um, of salinity uh, in order to, to fertilize the eggs. And the oxygen must also be higher than two milliliters per liter. Uh, and um, as I said, the cod ha ha uh, eggs uh, have to float uh, and the buoyancy is, uh, is around 14.5 PSU. Uh, so even in, in the normal circumstances, a uh, lot of eggs are lost and sedimented. Uh, so it could be regarded as a subspecies. Um, what has happened since the mid-1980s, uh, that is that two um, out of three uh, spawning locations have been lost, one east of um, Gotland, the Gotland Deep, and, and one in close to the Polish coast, uh, um, uh, the Gdansk Deep. And, um, uh, why is that? And uh, <coughs> it's mostly related to, to hydrographic shifts in, in, in the Baltic Sea, here illustrated by uh, the Gotland Deep. Um, the upper panel shows the salinity, um, and it has been rather constant, except for a period in, in the mid-1980s to the mid-1990s, uh, uh, when the inflows to, to the Baltic Sea was very low and, and um, um, it was a decline in, in, in salinity. It led to more turbulent water condition, less stratified conditions and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, higher oxygen content uh, in, in deeper parts of, of the Baltic Sea. But uh, as I said, uh, cod doesn't not only need um, uh, oxygen, it needs salt as well. So it's uh, important for, for, for reproduction. And um, this shows the development of the water volume with uh, sufficient salinity for reproduction over the last century. Um, and um, up to the 1950s, uh, the reproductive volume uh, with the sufficient oxygen followed the, the, the water volume with um, sufficient salinity. But uh, after that, uh, it has disappeared in, in the Gotland Basin due to oxygen depletion and uh, in the Gdansk Deep during a period due to uh, the loss of, um, of salinity. And while in the Bornholm Basin and, and, and the uh, Arcona Basin, um, condition has been rather stable and, and uh, one shouldn't say that the cod is case is lost in, in the Baltic Sea because it can still reproduce quite well in, in the Bornholm Basin and Arcona Basin. Here is an uh, other view on, on, on a geographical scale how the spawning areas have changed and, uh, and to the left you can see how it was in the 1970s uh, and how uh, it disappeared and reappeared also in, in, in later years in, in, um, in Gdansk Deep. But the spawning activity in the Gdansk Deep is very low today, so it's mostly concentrated over Bornholm. This is important for, to understand where to find cod. Most cod are found in the southern part of the Baltic Sea especially around the Bonan Island. Um, and now we have to <laughs> go to the growth uh, part. And um, 
in the end of 2000, uh, the recruitment of COD was very good in, in the Baltic Sea, uh, and um, the prospects were good. And, and, uh, it was said that the cod stock was saved in a, in a way, but some years later it uh, it uh, was clear that the biomass didn't materialize at, uh, as it should, uh, and um, the, the, the fishery declined. So what happened? Uh, you can, in the upper panel you can see how the total stock biomass above 35 centimeters eventually became lower than the uh, stock, uh, spawning stock biomass and, and that is because the cod was getting smaller and mature earlier. It also led to the, uh, the phenomenon that the fisher weren't able to use up their uh, fishing quotas uh, <coughs> and um, and also uh, one can uh, estimate this changed as a lower productivity as uh, yield or landing per recruit, which declined in since uh, year 2000. So the problem is, is not directly fishery related. So uh, the number of cod increased, in, but they were many, but not very big. And, and uh, the size distribution truncated over time. Uh, and also maturity, size at maturity and condition uh, declined uh, as well. Um, so this decline in individual growth and survival, this is also due to oxygen depletion and that is not um, certain because here's a, how hypoxia in the Baltic Sea is related very much to the bathymetry. Uh, that means that the deeper parts are oxygen depleted, while in, in, in the reddish area uh, on the figure sh shows um, the area above the halocline, the, the oxygenated areas. And um, how does it look in, in a, a historical view? In 1977, when the production was high, also oxygen um, depletion was common. and um, hypoxic area were uh, extensive. Uh, in 1993 it has the, the oxygen depletion has declined uh, or have, has been uh, had been uh, reduced uh, and in 2011 the oxygen uh, condition were worse than ever but the, the, the change from from, uh, from the high productive period is not that uh, conspicuous. And um, <coughs> here is also a figure on, on the oxygen content development per basin in the Arcona Basin, Bornholm Basin and Gotham Deep and uh, at different depths uh, and uh, it's rather constant and, and even if it's possible to find um, a, tr a trend uh, the, the, the variability, the seasonal variability is so high that any cod at any time would have encountered um, uh, low uh, oxygen content uh, at time when, um, um, uh, at any time. So, so um, it, it's difficult to say that, uh, that the oxygen situation in, in the Bornholm Basin, for instance, had been uh, have, has become worse. And also the frequency of hypoxia events um, sorry, um, uh, are rather stable. So um, hypoxia in itself seems not to be the prime agent behind the, uh, the severe decline in growth. Uh, so conclusions, uh, the reproductive volume in Gotland Basin is disappeared uh, due to um, um, oxygen depletion since the 1950s. Um, it also disappeared in the Gdansk deep, both of oxygen depletion and uh, s salt, uh, the, the deficiency in salt. And um, the stratified period in, in the 1970s and 80s 
the individual growth was normal, but the stock was very productive, and the situation today is not that similar. Uh, is not that uh, different uh, in terms of uh, hypoxia and. Um, um, the biomass had dis declined due to, to lower growth and, and, uh, and um, survival. Um, and the reason behind this is, is unclear. And, and um, Anna will tell us more about if feeding conditions have changed, uh, that, uh, especially with relation to the benthic fauna, uh, and if that could explain the decline in, in cod. Thank okay, you. thank you very much, uh, Henrik. Um, I forgot to say at the beginning that uh, you, uh, the viewers, uh, can send in questions to us. Uh, you can do it two ways. Uh, one is via Slido, and you should see the code and the address in the screen. And the other is uh, via our website, osterschulcentrum.su.se. Uh, I should say also that our colleague Lisa Barryquist, who normally helps field the questions, is unfortunately not with us in the studio today. So uh, I'll do as best as I can. But in the meantime, I have just a couple of questions myself. Um, and one is, um, uh, it, it, can we say when the conditions began to decline? Um, well, uh, in relation to re reproduction, it started to decline in the 1950s. Uh, the, mm -hmm. uh, Due to eutrophication of, of the Baltic Sea, uh, and um, in relation to, to growth and uh, survival, it seems that uh, it has been a steady decline since um, since the mid 1990s. Since the mid 1990s, yeah. and wh when uh, did scientists start to notice this decline? It was it became obvious um, uh, in the beginning of the 2010s. Okay, mm. so th it took uh, quite a while then. Bef yeah, if you, in re retrospective, you can see the, the decline in, in, in mean size and, and, and size at maturity and so on. That makes a big challenge then for mm. the scientists and, and the managers and the fishers also if things aren't happening and it's... it's, it's um, yes, the, the stock is very unproductive. It, could, it can't be fished at the, at the moment and, and uh, mm. should just be saved for better days. Yeah, okay. And uh, you mentioned uh, uh, the term fishing mortality. Is that the same as what we would normally think of as fishing pressure? or uh, More or less, yes. More or less, okay. <laughs> okay, that's good. Thanks a lot. Uh, and uh, now we'll, we'll uh, turn to uh, Anna, who's a researcher, as I said, at uh, uh, Helsinki University from the uh, Tramine Zoological Station. and. Anna, I think you can tell us a bit more about uh, uh, the situation of the food of the cod uh, on the bottom of the seafloor and how that's developed over time, and if that could be an explanation for the decline. Yes, thank you, Charles, for the opportunity to talk about the benthic fauna as a food for cod. Um, I will take and share my screen over here. Um, let's see. Can you see the presentation now? Um, so, uh, while the diet of the adult cod consists of 80% of uh, herring and sprat, young cod below 35 centimeters also feed on the benthic microfauna. Uh, and that is species that live uh, within or on the seafloor. Specifically, cod seems to prefer benthic species such as the isopod here, Sodira entomon, the amphipods, Monopodeia finis and Pontopodeia fumarata, but also polychaetes, such as the um, polychaetes Bilgida sarsi, and also muses, which are not included in this study. As Henrik pointed out in his presentation, <clears throat> bottom water oxygen deficiency is a severe problem in the Baltic Sea, especially in basins below the Halokine. And hypoxia as affects every aspect of the benthic community, from the abundance of the species to their biomasses and to the species composition. Um, while some of the species can uh, tolerate mild um, hypoxia during uh, short terms, most species uh, die when we have severe hypoxia, that is oxygen deficiency, or anoxia, that's oxygen depletion, 
and this will result in azoic lifeless sediments. So in our study, we used plenty of monitoring data from the 1990s uh, to 2018 to explore the patterns in benthic macrofauna in subdivision 24, that is the Arcona Basin, 25, the Bornholm Basin, 26, Southeastern Gotham Basin, and also in 28, uh, the Central Eastern Gotham Basin. And we specifically looked at the benthic biomass, uh, red flag plus clay meter. And as you can see here, the number uh, of sample stations per basin a year is varying a lot between years, but the average range, uh, the average depth range should be similar uh, between periods. So the comparisons we focused on uh, was has, uh, what are the changes in the fauna between depths, and then we compared depths above the helicline and below the, the helicline. Uh, where we expected benthic fauna to be affected by hypoxia and anoxia. And in this map, um, uh, the gradients are those the, uh, stations that are above the helicline. Uh, the blue rectangles are stations below the helicline. And we also compared two periods, uh, that is 1990 to 2004 and 2005 to 2018. And as Henrik already mentioned, um, between these two periods, uh, there was a, a very significant reduction in the condition of the eastern Baltic cod. Its size distribution had become very increasingly truncated. Uh, the condition on the health status had deteriorated. As expected, we found that the biomass of the benthic communities uh, is severely reduced in the EPR areas below the halocline throughout the subdivisions 25, 26, and 28. Uh, here I have an example from the Bornholm Basin, and this is a graph that represents a non-metric multidimensional scaling. And um, this works as the dots that are really close to one another have a similar uh, benthic community biomass composition. If we have dots on this graph that are very far from one another, uh, such as the gray here and the, uh, the black over here, the benthic community biomass composition diverge a lot. And as you can see from the Bornholm Basin, we got a significant difference uh, between the stations that are um, above the helicline and have uh, more or less uh, more oxygen. And, um, the sample locations that appear below the health plant that are oxygen deprived. And in a normal diagram, this looks something like this that we have actual biomass above, above the health plant in the Bornholm basin compared to the, to the areas below the health plant. What we also have um, is a depth gradient in benthic biomass. Here is an example from the Bornholm basin uh, just for a few stations. And here you should pay attention to the sizes of the circles. If you have a larger circle, you will have more biomass plus clear need of the benthic fauna. And what I try to illustrate here is that at shallow depths, uh, uh, 20, 20 to 40 meters, you will have a high benthic biomass due to that we have more food for the benthic animals in these places which will degrade a little bit when you go deeper down, but the actual shift to, to really decline in biomass, we can see, uh, see below the halocline uh, at approximately six meters steps uh, about here, which will vary here. So while we had a significant spatial or, or vertical trend in dental biomass composition, the temporal pattern was not as clear. Um, Benthic biomass composition did not show a clear difference between the two periods that we looked at in subdivision 24, 25, and 26. And the data showed that, especially above the helicon, we still had, had these uh, long lived species, uh, key species such as the Baltic clan, Macoma Baltica. Uh, however, in subdivision 28, Gotham, the Gotham Deep or the Central East and Gotham Basin, uh, the statistical test indicated that something had happened uh, between the two periods in the community biomass composition. 
Um, and here we can see that we had a, a decrease in the uh, biomass, uh, especially of the Crustacea monoporea affinis um, of 2005, or actually going on from the 1990s. While polychaetes, especially the invasive American spinach polychaete marasolera, increased in biomass. Um, such a change in bed community biomass composition was not statistically clear from the Bronholm Basin, where we had a, a really high variation in the biomass of amphipods in the beginning of the 1990s. Also, here in the Bornholm Basin, the the favorite food species for the uh, for the cod um, uh, for the uh, young cod Hasidurientma was present in areas above the Helicline uh, during this time period, and uh, it's fair to note that um, Hasidurientma uh, had really low or no biomasses below the Helicline during this time period that we looked at. And they were basically lacking in, in all deeper parts of, the, of these subdivisions. So uh, while it's clear that eutrophication and the consequent bottom water oxygen deficiency affect benthic macrofauna as a food source for the eastern water cod, this trend is however more clear across spatial and vertical gradients and not uh, and less clear over time as we still found that the biomass uh, above the helicons, uh, helicon in, in these areas. However, it would be interesting um, in future investigations to examine if there are changes in the food uh, quality and the special species specific patterns of a longer time periods um, for biomass versus abundance ratios. Nevertheless, um, uh, a lot of publications have been uh, presenting um, other issues that will affect uh, the status of the Eastern Baltic cod, some of them listed here. Uh, and uh, it seems that multiple factors is affecting the condition of the cod. If you are interested in our study, um, it's available from the ISIS Journal of Marine Science. If you are interested in the benthic fauna, uh, please feel free to contact me, otherwise I will leave um, some space for questions and discussion. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Anna. That was uh, really interesting. Uh, did I understand correctly that you uh, your study covers the period from the 1990s until 2018? Yes, from, from the data that was available uh, in different uh, uh, open access databases, yeah. Okay, so that's that's uh, actually um, during the period that, as I understood from Henrik already, the, the condition was starting to decline, so we don't really have a baseline from before that period to compare with. Is that the case, or? Yeah, um, the case was that the um, the data availability before that period was um, more sporadic, and it would be really interesting to look at longer temporal trends in benthic fauna, especially from areas above the Helicline, where we know less about the development of, of the benthic fauna. Mm. That's uh, uh, touching on, on an issue that we've talked about before here, about uh, how important it is with long time series for um, uh, studies on the, on the environmental developments. I should say uh, that um, uh, something I forgot to mention before, the questions that get sent in that we don't have time to answer here and now, we will answer on our website afterwards, uh, where you will also find a summary of today's uh, webinar and uh, uh, a link so that if you want to pass it on to someone else or look again, it will be there too. In the meantime, there's a number of questions have come in, so I'll, I'll go straight to them. Uh, the first one was to Henrik, and uh, the question is, uh, you showed that in a series of years, the cod landings did not even uh, uh, reach up to the, to the uh, allowed levels, the tax. Mm. Uh, so from a management point of view, it seems that the management allowed open access fishing on this stock uh, for more than 10 years. Is, is that the case? And what 10-year period would that be? Um, 
Well, it, it's true. Uh, um, even the ISIS advice w were higher than the actual uh, catches. Mm. So, <coughs> even if the tax were even higher sometimes. Um, yes, so, so uh, it, it was no limitation on, 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 on the fishing uh, during uh, the last 10 years in, in the 2010s. Uh, um, more than the mesh size or um, economic constraints. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and then uh, a question is how much do fishing practices matter as in how we fish and as you mentioned what gear we use mm -hmm. and if there's anything we can do to reduce natural mortality. So if we take the first question first, how much fishing practices matter? Um, h hard to tell I would say. Um, perhaps um, the, the situation that would have been better if the fishing practices had been similar to to, to the ones that we find in uh, in the Öresund with only gill netting and uh, preserving a, a bulk of uh, large cod. Maybe cod spawning would have survived in, 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 in the Gdansk uh, deep if that had been the case um, mm -hmm. as a Re, uh, reserve of uh, large cod d during bad years of low salinity, uh, because that that stock is has disappeared now. It's not mm -hmm. coming back, even if the uh, condition for spawning is is better than it was. Um, the, the second uh, part about natural mortality. Yes, that's the question. Uh, what happened to the cod? Why is it in such a bad health? Mm -hmm. uh, and it started uh, before the grey seals uh, infested them with um, seal worms and, and so on. So uh, it's not clear. And um, um, there is food, there is oxygen, there are areas where they can feed. and, and um, it could be mentioned that uh, an area in, in the north of the, of the Baltic Sea is still, uh, still harbors not many, but healthy uh, cod mm. in the uh, Sea of Åland. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 and that might give a clue of what has happened uh, to the stock. A clue, huh? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's, that's good. Uh, is a, a question to Anna. Uh, did you also look at the biochemistry and carbon dioxide sink and resuspension through, for example, trawling activities? No, unfortunately not. Uh, we did just this um, course overview of, of biomass um, available for the cod. Um, but there are recent studies uh, that have been uh, looking at the trawling effects uh, on the benthic fauna, for example, along with hypoxia. I think it was published in the Marine Eco um, Ecologic Progress series. Uh, it should be. Okay, and we have uh, uh, touched on the, the impacts of uh, bottom trawling on the seafloor in various ways in uh, previous Baltic breakfasts, and this, I think that that's an issue that we're going to be coming back to at some point also. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, another question that's come in is, to what extent do cod feed in shallow areas, for example, 20 uh, meters deep versus 40 meters versus 60 meters? Um, can we say anything about that? Um. First, could be said that uh, cod is a very active uh, species. It's not a phlegmatic species that uh, stays close to the seafloor all the time. It moves up and down mm -hmm. and uh, hunts um, in the water column and uh, feeds on the bottom. Uh, and um, what we can say about um, uh, habitat preferences is, is only based on, on, on uh, surveys, uh, troll surveys, um, 
conducted in, in the first and fourth quarter of the year. Um, so, and the, the, the troll service can only be, bottom troll service can only be made in areas where not too many stones and, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very restricted areas that are investigated. And um, um, if you look into the, the ISIS data, uh, there is not very much change in, in the Bornholm Basin for habitat preferences. Uh, so um, where they really what kind of uh, habitat they use uh, is a <laughs> guesswork, I think. Okay, and that, that touches on, on another question, and that is that if the condition is declining, and it seems that like the, the, the um, it, it doesn't, haven't, we haven't been able to detect a lack of food, as I understand, mm. uh, if that could be explained by uh, instead an increase in expensive energy, the cod have to be moving around more for one reason or another. Is, is that a possible explanation? Or do we know anything about that? Uh? No. Well, the, the, one, one could always speculate, of course. Um, uh, the abundance of herring has declined. Um, in, in, in in the southern part of, um, of the Baltic, and uh, it is the preferred uh, food item for for, um, for cod. Uh, um, so maybe they were moving around f in order to find the herring. Um, I don't know. But, uh, you should have uh, records on, on movements back in time then to mm. compare with. Ah, and we don't have that. Well, uh, I have been taking studies, but I think it's back in time also, but uh, I think uh, I haven't seen that kind of study. Okay. Uh, but, uh, but analyze the, the, the activity of fish uh, in, in that sense. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, maybe someone knows, but uh, I, I can't recall anyone. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Okay. Uh, is a, another question that uh, uh, um, I'm not sure uh, who, who uh, uh, could answer this. And the question is, how has the predation on the benthic fauna, the bottom living fauna, changed? Uh, the cod has decreased, but have other fish increased? Uh, they mentioned uh, sprat, stickleback, um, perhaps uh, uh, flatfish. Do we know anything about that? Uh, maybe uh, Anna will, would like to uh, answer. I think you are more qualified to answer this, uh, especially regarding the, uh, the fish species, Hendrik. Uh, it, it has been a speculation about not stickleback and spread, but, um, but uh, a flounder. Uh, mm. It might put a pressure or a competition between flounder and, and cod. But in that case, um, the biomasses of, of different benthic species would have declined over the last 30 years. Uh, if, that, if there is a competition between two right. species, I guess. Uh, so so uh, the, the answer is no, I guess. Okay, so even if the, 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 the um, and perhaps Anna could speak to this, even if the, the uh, cod feeding and the benthic species has declined, uh, uh, the feeding, potential feeding from other fish hasn't increased so much more that you would mm -hmm. notice a total net change in the benthic fauna, or? No, we didn't notice a total net change between those two periods. Um, that's correct, but that doesn't mean that uh, this is a very coarse comparison of all the data we have overall from, for example, the Bornholm Basin. So that doesn't mean that it, it in, in places it could be a, a decrease in inventic fauna that we haven't uh, detected with this kind of analysis. And I think that would be worth to take a further look into um, to see how, how increasing uh, fauna populations, for example, could have 
uh, impact of the uh, benthic flora as a fluid for, uh, for car cancer. Okay, very good. And uh, I'm very happy to see that a number of other questions are coming in. And, and uh, I might say also that uh, uh, when these questions come and you're not prepared to answer them uh, unexpectedly, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, maybe we could uh, 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 develop the answers a bit more on the website afterwards. Um, so, okay. Um, uh, I'll just run through this. Uh, did the high densities of small cod, that is uh, below 35 centimeters that Henrik mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, could that be a cause of the lower benthic fauna mass that Anna reported? Well, it goes back to Anna too, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and the lower benthic mass that we saw was especially uh, for the central east and Gotham Basin. Um, and I assume that would not totally be due to the, uh, the high density of, of smaller cod because if I understood Henry correctly, these are the, their area is more in the Bornholm Basin. Mm. Um, so uh, one of the things that have been discussed regarding cod and uh, food availability is of course spatial overlap. Uh, for example, with benthic fauna, but also with herring and spread. And there I don't have um, a specific answer, as you saw from the benthic monitoring st stations that I've used. Um, I don't have an answer if they overlap kind of with the, uh, the distribution of cod very well. Um, and that remains to, to be looked at. So it's a, it's a sounds like a complicated puzzle of uh, matching things both in time and space to sort of see what's actually a, a, a plausible cause of a, of a development. Mm -hmm. that, that's a very good point. Okay. Um, uh, so um, another comment. Oh, this is just a comment. Gill netting always targets on large individuals. Spawners, bottom trawlers catch generally cod. Uh, below 45 centimeters, the problem was too high overall fishing pressure. Okay, this is a, a comment. But a question, can we expect bottom trawling and the consequent destruction of the benthic habitat to be a major reason for cod population and size decline? Um, Anna, have you seen evidence of a, a destruction of benthic habitat impacting on the food availability or could there be other aspects that they're referring to there? Um, I think if you have frequent bottom trawling it will always affect the benthic animals. Um, so of course that could be uh, one, one aspect. Um, but um, uh, Large-scale changes in the benthic fauna could also be due to their quality uh, as food, uh, which has been shown for the northern Baltic proper, for example, from Sudirientum and in other studies. And I think that would be interesting to take a look into as well. Okay. Henrik, do you have a add-on on this? Yeah. Um... I, I don't think the bottom trawling has increased, as I shown, showed in, in, in one of my first slides. Uh, the fishing mortality ha had declined. It's uh, related to, to fishing activities, so, and, and most of the eastern Baltic cod is, is caught or was caught by uh, by trawls. So, so uh, probably the, the pressure on, on, on the benthic has decreased due to the decline of the cod stock. Um, and yes, of course, um, it's not only a matter of uh, biomasses, uh, it's also about quality of, of food. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, that could be a, a reason for, 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 for a change in, in, in health. Uh, it, it's, 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 it's a rather um, um, an, uh, worrying perspective that all the cod in, in the southern part is, is not in, in, in good health and very uh, unproductive and, and growing slowly and, and die uh, uh, early. Uh, <coughs> 
Uh, and um, so, so there must be a, an agent, or so maybe several agents, um, that uh, can affect on, on a very large scale, uh, uh, not just related to a certain bottom depth or, or certain food item. Okay, well, thank you very much. And uh, time has run out, unfortunately. Uh, we have still some more questions, but uh, it's time to wind up now. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Henrik and, and uh, Anna, for this. And thank you uh, for watching and for sending in a lot of questions. Uh, our plan is to meet again uh, in the Baltic Breakfast in one month on the 28th of September, uh, hopefully uh, uh, in person at the Clara Skandik in downtown Stockholm. And the plan is to talk then about uh, seabirds and uh, wind power. Uh, but uh, keep posted on the uh, Baltic Sea Center website for further information about that. Thanks very much for this time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.